Light aids us in many ways. It lets us see during the day. It provides energy to our plants, which give us oxygen and allow us to grow food, not only for ourselves, but also for the animals that help support us. Through infrared light, it provides us with the heat energy needed to survive. Now, in all of these cases, the source of this light is our very own sun. But light can serve us in other ways too, including helping to study the universe and things like exoplanets, stars, and even nebula that are simply too far away for us to reach. Before we proceed, let's quickly visit the electromagnetic spectrum. Light exists in many different wavelengths, with the longest of these being radio waves, and the shortest of these being gamma waves. Only a small subset of these sit in the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. These include red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The rest of the wavelengths sit outside our ability to see, but we have detectors that can help us interact with these. And when one knows the characteristics of how these wavelengths interact with various elements and molecules, an exciting possibility presents itself to us. Each element has its own unique spectrum. This can be thought of as a fingerprint of sorts for said element, and it allows us to figure out what elements, say, a star is made of, based on what colors of light it emits, or, if we use a glowing nebula as an example, we can kind of find out what gases it's made of based on the color it emits. To help us understand this a little bit more, let's take a look at the most abundant element in our universe, hydrogen. An atom of hydrogen is rather simple. It consists of a single proton in the nucleus with one electron orbiting said nucleus. Now, when this hydrogen atom is chilling without much energy, its electron will be at the lowest energy level. But when the atom absorbs light, the electron can jump to a higher energy level known as an excited state. It can jump one level or even a few levels depending on how much energy it absorbs. One thing to note is that the electron can only move in full steps, so from one energy level to the next. It is unable to, say, move half of an energy level. And it also takes a very specific amount of energy for the electron to jump up a level. No more or no less will cause the change. This is where some of the fun stuff happens. Because the energy a hydrogen atom needs to jump from one level to the next is a specific amount, it ends up corresponding with the wavelength of light it absorbs. Put differently, the electron will only absorb photons that give them the exact amount of energy needed to jump levels. For photons, they carry only specific amounts of energy which corresponds to their wavelength, something we had touched on earlier in this video. Now, let's have a look at the absorption spectrum of hydrogen. It will show us a bit more about this interaction. Within the visible light spectrum, hydrogen absorbs light with the following wavelengths. 410 nanometers, which is violet, 434 nanometers, which is blue, 486 nanometers, which is like a blue-green, and 656 nanometers, which is red. The shortest of these, violet, also carries the highest amount of energy. It causes the electron to jump up four levels. Red on the other side of the spectrum, with the longest wavelength, carries the least amount of energy, and it will cause the electron to jump up only one level. Something similar happens if the electron loses this energy. 
thus dropping back down to a lower energy state. And these are known as emission lines, and they will be the inverse of the absorption line. This is because when it loses energy and is dropping to a lower level, it loses the same amount of energy, the same wavelength, that it would take to jump up to that level. So the highest energy and shortest wavelength, which is violet, 410 nanometers, for hydrogen anyway, comes from the electron that loses the most energy, as opposed to it being the electron that gains the most energy when it's absorbing it. It's these absorption and emission lines and our ability to catalog and study them that forms the basis of spectroscopy. Like our hydrogen example, other elements have their own unique absorption and emission lines. They have different arrangements of electrons, and their difference in spectra reflects how much energy these electrons, these electrons absorb and emit when they're changing energy states. This also works for molecules too, but that is a bit above the focus of this video. Let's talk a bit about transits next. A transit, at least in terms of our interests today, occurs when an exoplanet crosses between us and its host star. And this presents us with an interesting opportunity. If we start by knowing what spectrum the star is giving off, and we study what light makes it through the atmosphere of the transiting planet, through the light that is let through, or not absorbed by the atmosphere of the planet, we can glean insight into what elements are in the planet's atmosphere. This is one basic example of spectroscopy. And through gathering information in this way, we can collect and observe spectra from different astronomical sources, providing us with yet another way to learn about locations and things that are simply too far away for us to reach. I hope you've learned something, and I implore you to step outside tonight and look towards the stars.